Hi everybody, welcome to Dragon's Pearl. I'm trying something different today. I've said before this channel's new so everything is different but it's a little different from what I've been doing so far. Um, I'm calling this um, Daily Practices and also Shuffle Chats. I just came up with that. I'm not like trying to uh, copyright it or anything, but I do think it's cute and I do I do like it and I did just come up with it as far as um, the other day when I was talking a little bit about uh, my thoughts and feelings about where we draw our inspiration from in the spiritual community and, and how that relates to our heritage and ethnicities and respectfully communicating with one another. So just some very light topics. <laughs> like always, like I'm always, I, I don't have like a light mode like I do, like I'm, like I'm funny and <laughs> I laugh a lot. But like as far as people are like, oh, there must be something she's not this intense about. No, I'm this intense about everything and I, I do a lot. I have a lot of hats and I'm this intense about all of them. But if you know me really well, then you know that it's the same thing at the core, which is, you know, just wanting to understand the world better and help people in different ways and just understanding that, you know, there's different, different modes for you know different types of communication for different sorts of things and just really believing that it takes all sorts in the world and and so when we when we so this is all about authenticity I've been practicing radical authenticity for a long time so I'm going to talk about it a lot it's taken me a long time to get to a point that I feel ready to talk about it it's been very difficult it is not an easy thing to do but for for a lot of people like me it was really a matter of, of life and death and people who, who are not super into like why is your why is your identity so important it's like well if you um have always had access to it and you've always been accepted for it both at home and outside of the home in um you know i'm from a minority in the u.s so uh there's some language that I use that comes from the study of equity. <laughs> it's like a dirty word. Oh my God, we're talking about e equity. Yeah, we're talking about equity. My goodness. <laughs> so anyways, shuffle chats. Here's the idea of the shuffle chat and how I came up with this, this name for it is, so obviously daily practices is, is obviously what that's about is that you know, for the next <clears throat> month or so, I'm not going to have time to be doing pick a cards and things like that. I'm, I, I'm spending a lot of time on my own practice and my own uh, relationship with my ancestors <clears throat> and my family and myself and the world. So also just really light things, but I've been doing some really heavy work. If you have been following me, then you know, and um, I just decided that instead of like waiting until I feel like my practice is ready to share with you or like I have as much time as I did a couple months ago to make a bunch of pick a card videos and just spend a ton of time time on it right now, you know, whether you are juggling a few jobs or school and work like I am or, or your, um, your work is in your home or in your community in a less traditional sense, you know, whatever, whatever it looks like, there are times that it is harder than others to do your things that help you stay, um, centered or, or to just take care of yourself. Like just, you know, whether that's, um, this kind of practice or, or for some people just going for a walk or, you know, whatever works for you. So, so, so I decided instead of waiting, I'll just share my practice with you. I'll just, you know, do the things that I would do. I was going to do a flute song and I wanted to, um, burn some incense and, and pull some cards for myself before I did that. So I decided, well, why don't I just film it? And, um, this is something I've been working on in, in several capacities are different ways 
to not only cultivate my sadhana, my daily practice, sadhana is Sanskrit. Um, I'm of many lineages and I uh, am a, I, I became a polyglottist student of, of many languages because of this journey of self-discovery and, and you definitely don't need to only study things that um, are in your direct ancestry and heritage. In fact, that's how we get a lot of ignorance, right? Is people being like, I can't learn about that because that's not what I believe. And it's like, well, that's, you don't have to believe it to hear about it. But if other people have different belief systems than you, then it's always good to get a better understanding of how other people see the world <clears throat> and to build empathy and compassion within ourselves and for others. So I'm inviting you into my sadhana practice uh, I have other platforms where I am inviting people into other types of sadhana practices. I'm finding this has been really healing for me in my practice of authenticity as far as I've been practicing it for so long, but because it wasn't actually safe, I also had to be so guarded. And now I'm going through this phase of um, being and feeling safer. And um, so so I just have more more room, I think, and I'm starting to realize that these coping mechanisms and this this toolbox of contemplation that, that I have and for a long time I was teaching it and then I felt like I wasn't able to teach it anymore and I, and I, I mean I could have but I just wanted to focus on other things. Not right now buddy. My dog wants to come in. <clears throat> and, um, and I wanted my practice to be more internal and more for me because I really had to get out of this kind of toxic feminine, I don't know, if, uh, and we all have a male and a feminine aspect that, that have their own balance that's regardless of our uh, sex assigned at birth. But, the, but, but what I mean by toxic feminine in this case is that um, it is the two giving, you know, being my whole identity, being wrapped up in being a caretaker and that being really something I was always really naturally gifted at, but also there being other things I'm naturally gifted at that, that I hadn't given myself the chance to fully explore. Um, so I shifted my energy into those more material observable things um and that was really important because also you might as you might imagine my finances were not doing great you know it's like i'm not saying you can't make a great living teaching contemplation but but i do think that it's wise as it was advised to me and i should have probably taken this advice to to have a if you're going to teach contemplation to to plan on spending the first 20 years just practicing and the truth is that teaching is a great way to learn and that's part why it's part of the process that's why a lot of people do trainings just to develop their own contemplation practice um so i'm not saying you need to wait 20 years to teach and i'm not saying that it's wrong to, you know when people say oh you shouldn't ask for money for that or you shouldn't ask for money for the think about what they think it is okay to ask money for and who they think it's okay to say they shouldn't ask for money for things who they expect to give those things for free it's it's a, it's a personal decision there are things i don't like to trade for money um but but i've also had that that belief weaponized against me and sometimes when i didn't even really fully understand what was going on so you know, you, you don't tell people who had everything taken from them again and again that they're not allowed to want anything, that, that they're not allowed to compete in the world because that's not equity, that's perpetuating the status quo. So a little light CRT in our morning session together. I can't tell you how, I'm sure you can imagine that I don't get to just talk about this. <laughs> my professional life as much as I'd like to all the people close to me like it's not like a secret none of this is a secret but um I just think that this is the place 
to talk about the spirituality and the older I get, the more my spiritual path is really connected to my beliefs about, about justice. So it's natural for that to come up here. That brings us back to story shuffles. So of many, many lineages as I am, storytelling is, yes, storytelling is important in all cultures, but, but we all know that there are some cultures that hold storytelling uh, in, a, in a particularly auspicious way. And pretty much all of my ancestors shared that. They had many things that weren't shared, right? Many things coming from totally different belief systems and parts of the world. But, 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 but you know, as always with, with wherever we're from and whatever, however important our differences are, there's those core things. And then sometimes there's also things that we learn about each other that we had more in common that are even beyond those core things. So identity is more than the sum of its parts. Um, and what I was doing the other day when I was really sharing with you about my ancestry, particularly the Native American ancestry, because I wanted to talk about why I was gonna be playing more flute music here and all of that and why I feel like it's important for me to be talking about not only my spirituality, but also how that relates to my heritage and ethnicity and ancestry, because those are really important things to acknowledge when we're talking about these beautiful traditions from all over the world. And, and I, I love being mixed. I feel like it's so beautiful that there's so many beautiful traditions, so much culture, so many different cultures woven together more the sum of their parts. Um, you, a term that I started hearing about 12 years ago when I started getting really serious about this stuff was third culture. And that's a, it's a, it's a technical, you know, term from the literature in equity in the U.S. about, I'm not sure that author was from the U.S., but this, this school is, the school of academia is from the U.S. for sure. So anyways, I'm sure you'll, heard about that so yeah there's been it's been crazy it's been crazy so anyways what I was doing was I was I was shuffling the cards while I was talking and when I was talking about how much I hadn't been able to talk about who I am in the past because of the trauma my family had been in and I pulled out the ten of swords at the ten of air and the ten of swords in this deck is these tropical birds laying dead on the ground like looks like they've been talked like they've been poisoned and it just hit me so hard like it was just like the the ten of swords in this deck to me is about surviving genocide it's like that's not what I think the ten of swords I mean that's, I know that's not what everyone thinks the ten of swords is about I don't to me that's not what the ten of swords is for all decks but in this Orisha deck like the first time I saw that card I just felt it in my heart and I just knew that's what it represented to me is like all the branches of the tree that have been wiped away by hatred and like yeah I'm there to survive and observe but there's no there's no living bird in that in that car that you can see you just see it. it's like just looking at the loss it's like it's like the Shoah and so yeah so I'm also Jewish I'm a, I'm a lot of things and so as I've been talking more about the Native American ancestry I've had people close to me rightfully concerned about wanting to make sure that I'm not internalizing anti-Semitism because that's easy to do, isn't it? I'm not. It's just that my parents reclaimed their Jewish heritage and ancestry and that was complicated for mostly the same reasons of bigotry and hatred that made it so unsafe, that made it so that I grew up speaking Hebrew because my parents made sure I had that that opportunity and yes I am Middle Eastern and I have Mizrahi ancestry as well as Sephardim, North African, Spanish, that's what Sephardim are, and Ashkenazi, Ukrainian, and Romani. And so when people I said the other day, like don't ask people what they are, it's super it's super rude. I'm like at least don't ask me and expect me to not be offended because I promise I'll be offended by that. I think that's really offensive. So but you know, if someone close enough to me for it to be appropriate for them to ask, ask what my 
my identity was, it, it would be like, oh, well, you need to sit down because there's a pretty long list, you know, and that's not because some people who are, are really toxic here will be like, oh, you're just confused. No, I'm not. Um, I'm not confused about who I am and, and don't ask me who I am if, if you want to reduce the answer if all you want is an answer that you can reduce to something that you can consume don't do that <laughs> and if you do i'm not having it i'm sure you i'm sure you understand why if you're still listening so anyways i pulled that card i talked a little bit about that and then i pulled this card which i actually i didn't keep out i shuffled the cards and then i picked up all of the cards and there was one that was left on the bottom and i was like oh that must be an important card and it was the nine of coins that I talked that came out when I was doing my shuffle chat. That's what I'm calling them. It's story time. It's storytelling with uh, using these intuitive tools just kind of in an organic way. But I'm calling them shuffle chats because I think that's really cute. And anyways, I, I during the first shuffle chat, which I wasn't calling them that then because I just came up with the idea after after that session, after I did this, was to, um, is, is that I like this as a practice, a practice of storytelling that I don't just, um, pick a cards are, are great. I, I may do more than later. I may not. Um, you know, obviously I'm going through a lot of growth and development and change. So this channel is, is my creative space that it can change with me and well, Scorpio hanging out by so um, the nine of coins came out in the shuffle when I was talking about all of the resiliency and all of the gifts you know not 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 just um, that my grandparents worked really hard and were able to provide a really stable life for for my parents and for me but a really strong foundation but but also I think more so the spiritual gifts and and also that in many ways uh, you know in many ways we had advantages but in many ways we were really um, disadvantaged in ways a lot of people don't want to acknowledge and and weren't coming from managed to to survive against the odds really and managed to pass down the, all of the sacred knowledge, not only the spiritual side, but even if you're agnostic or atheist, I, I believe you can still appreciate all of these things because we're also talking about human psychology and anthropology, and it's just um, things that everyone can appreciate. And in fact, I think um, the field of ethnic studies, which is pretty big now in California, now that's a high school requirement as part of the standard curriculum, um, that's part of why that's really important is is when you t there's something going on in the world that people think we've been taught that if you disagree with someone you can't listen to them and I mean don't get me wrong there are some ideas that are not worth tolerating or entertaining I mean you, you can't tolerate intolerance right I'm not <laughs> I'm not here to have that debate trust me but but generally um, you know, like, you can, um, if you're invited to a ceremony that's part of a religion that, that you're not a part of, um, a lot of people are raised to believe that, um, that they're doing something wrong if they do that, or that they, they can't listen to those stories if they don't believe those stories as their core beliefs. And what that does is creates a world that we don't know each other as well as we could. And that's the shame because um, people are pretty amazing, especially on that level, especially when you can get past, oh, I know all the trauma and, you know, I know. But so I decided to keep doing the shuffle chats. So the nine of coins came up when I was talking about the gifts from my ancestors. And what are the gifts from my ancestors? They are this practice. Everything I do in this practice is a part of that and from my ancestors having 
suffered the way that they did, um, as many have suffered by the hand of colonialism and white, sup white supremacy and hatred, um, and this is not to say that I've been the most affected by these things, but to understand that there are so many people in the world like me who are mixed that racism affects people differently, but it, it certainly, it certainly affects everyone. <clears throat> So this practice is me sharing my gifts, and not only my gifts, but they're the gifts from my ancestors, and they're not the gifts from surviving genocide. They're the gifts that survived. They're the seeds that someone managed to get through. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say it once out loud. I don't. I'm not gonna make a habit of this, but while while I'm setting up this page and going through. A lot of my personal life, I want to say, um, you know, out loud who I am and how I identify. So earlier I had said that I've been talking a lot about the Native American because just like my parents reclaimed our Jewish ancestry, both Sephardic and Ashkenazi and Mizrahi, I, I'm mostly the one reclaiming that now because now with genetics, now I know that's true. So anyways, a lot of us, you know, we're told we came from the last place our family came through on their way. That was a long journey looking for safety. So the reason that I'm talking so much about the Maori and the, the Pacific Island ancestry and the Asian American ancestry and the Native American ancestry is that while I had the privilege of growing up connected to my Jewish identity, speaking Hebrew, studying the Kabbalah from a very young age with my rabbi, I, I, and, 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 and again, Native American religion was illegal until the 70s. I grew up in the 90s. So my, my grandparents did an amazing job of helping me connect with those things, but it was so recent that they even had the freedom to safely give little clues without worrying. I mean, if you have to imagine, you can't. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then then you don't know, right? So, so the reason, you know, so, so, so none of my parts of my identity are more important to me or less important to me than the other. I believe in third culture. I believe that I am more than the sum of these beautiful lineages, and that's what humanity about is is about is about taking all the beautiful things about who we are, working through the trauma of whatever's happened because everyone has some kind of ancestral trauma. I don't mean like PTSD. Not everyone has PTSD, but I think you know what I mean. If you need help, please get help. Um, this is this is a community space, so it can help. It can help with 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 feeling more connected and being more connected with people. But it's not a replacement. This kind of thing is not a replacement for therapy. Oh, okay, guys. So I think that's everything I wanted to say today. So the shuffle chats, though, is the ideas that I just shuffle the card while I'm talking and telling my stories when I when I have something like this that I want to tell. Oh, I said I was going to say who I am. <laughs> so I'm Jewish. I said that. Most of my family who came to the U.S. from somewhere else came from Ukraine. And most of them didn't really come from Ukraine. Most of them came from Persia and... Pakistan and India and uh, North Africa. I'm sorry, North Africa too, but I don't know if that's the way they came. Anyway, so you can see why it's not super easy to say who I am. Because <laughs> there's a lot of things. So so that's the Ashkenazi. The Ashkenazi is through Ukraine, and that's also where I get my Romani and some of my North Asian and Southeast Asian ancestry. Um, and then I'm also 
Native American and Asian American, and that has to do with the history of the railroads, and um, it, it was mostly Chinese immigrants who built the railroads, but there, there's also a really long history of exploitation of workers from Southeast Asia and Oceania, and that's, um, so I also have a lot of that. Um, so I guess that's about it. I guess that's about it. So I identify, and then, and then those are regions and ancestry and, and, you know, but then I also, I do have tribal identity. I won't say because it's my actual name, but my actual last name is one of my tribal identities. Um, and um, I identify as Maori and um, I identify as as Ute and Navajo, Mihai. Uh, I, I think I pronounced that. I've been working on my Navajo, so forgive me if <clears throat> I'm learning a lot. So you have to be gentle with yourself when you want to learn a lot of languages like this and when you want to learn a lot about yourself because, because if you really want to learn a lot, you learn that there's so much to learn. It can be really overwhelming. So that's who I am. And, oh wow, Ten of Cups, which is exactly, so the Ten of Coins and the Ten of Cups are both about intergenerational wealth, but the Ten of Cups is the, the physical, and the Ten of Cups is like the emotional, right? So, beautiful. So this is that emotional, spiritual, social inheritance, and now, what I'm modeling here is is not for you to be like me, because only only I can be like me. What I want is for you to get to know you. I want to be, it's the saying, so authentically myself that I am empowering others to do the same. That's what um, that's what this channel is about for me. We got the moon and the seven of wands. Okay, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> I got the four of air, which is not a particularly quote unquote negative card, um, but in this deck, and I'm sorry, I, I got, had some accidents with some water spills and I'm sorry to my cards, I'm trying. <laughs> trying to keep them in good condition. Um, but as you can see, the, the Four of Swords is not particularly positive in this deck, uh, but it is sometimes called the meditation card. So, you know, I think it's about contemplation through discomfort, really. And I pulled the moon again, so that's good. <laughs> and I pulled the Seven of Wands. And Eliba, which is um, the mask god in uh, Centuria. And again, uh, let me know or forgive me if I if I say anything incorrect. I'm a student, you know, I'm a lifelong student. So these are things I've these aren't things I just started studying. These are things I've been studying literally since childhood. But I'll always be a student of them because that's their nature, right? So I'm gonna put the Eliba card. With my masks, I'm going to put these ones away. And I got the Four of Coins, which is like uh, actually about like a strong financial foundation. So, so there is this theme of. I think I think the theme is. that theme of survival and resiliency of that. I mean, that's certainly what I'm trying to bring into this. And, um, and so the nine of coins here, the way she's planting these seeds, it's like, it's almost like, and then the four of coins, that's also about financial foundation and stability. And you can think of kind of as like the four points of the house. Um, it's like you're planting the seeds in the physical world, but they're coming through 
in the spiritual and emotional world. Okay, I'm gonna play a little song now. Oh, actually, I am going to turn this video off and then I'm gonna um, start a new video for the flute song. See you later, thank you.